I'm going way more, especially when you don't have a Chris Olave at the wide receiver position or Rashid Shaheed. Uh, Alvin Kamara is going to have to be a guy that's dominant tonight. Uh, he's capable of doing it, but can they actually get it done? That offensive line has to be ferocious winning at the point of attack. J-Mac, let's go to Sunday. Good game, Houston and Green Bay. 249 and a half passing yards is the number on Jordan Love. You're going... Over or under, more or less. Oh, I love Jordan Love, but I am going less See what you on did? this one. You heard that? The Houston Texans defense, with their defensive ends, they get after the quarterback, and they have a secondary and a linebacker core that blitz you and have you under attack. I think Jordan Love has a solid game, but I do not have him over 250 yards. I don't think it's happening. Mm. And then, Dan, let's go to the NFC East battle at MetLife Stadium. Eagles, Giants, the return of Saquon Barkley. One and a half touchdown passes for Jalen Hurts is the number. Which way do we go? I'm going to say less. One, because I think this Giants defensive secondary mm -hmm. is playing really good football. Mm. And then two, I think ego's a good thing. I think Saquon has one. I think Saquon scores multiple touchdowns in this football game. The Eagles make it a point to get him those on the road against the team that said you weren't worth that money. Yeah, I think that's a good point. The question is whether he throws it to him because, because that would get Jalen Hurts' number over. I'm agreeing with you. They're going to get Saquon the touchdown. Greeny, what are we doing here? I'm just asking the question. I'm not doing anything. We're tush pushing all the way down in the one yard line we're giving to Saquon. Tush push all the way down. Totally fair. In the meantime, let's talk about the Eagles. Sal Palantonio was with us from his kitchen about an hour ago, and he had this to say about the state of football in Philadelphia. He should not be engaging the fans after the game. He had just won the game. He clearly understands that. He needs to have his energy focused on his football team after winning a game and getting them better prepared. From the Eagles' perspective, this is the dictionary definition of a must-win game. You're going to MetLife Stadium. You were dump trucked by the Giants the last time you were there. they got to show us that they're functioning operationally on offense and defense two games in a row, and that they can win them. Okay, so a really good point. We've spent so much of this week talking about Nick Sirianni. What did he do? What should he do? All the rest of that. Well, I understand that. I want to put a little football into the football conversation here for a minute because you've been sort of tap dancing around getting into their offense, and we haven't really had the chance to explore it. They come off their bye week last week. They have all their guys healthy. Mm -hmm. I know Cleveland has a good defense, but they're not the 85 Bears. Sure. I thought that Eagles offense was going to explode last Sunday, and it didn't. And that was where I really have questions. What is wrong with the Eagles offense, specifically with the quarterback, and what do you want to see this weekend to prove to you that it's better? Well, Jalen holds the football too long. Now, he's coming off of his cleanest game, uh, really, in a year against the Cleveland Browns. So that's positive. I do not believe that the Eagles are running Kellen Moore's offense. I, I believe that the Eagles have gone back to that 2022 specifically in their pass game offense. And listen, I like some of the stuff where they just go, hey, AJ, we're going to put you by yourself or sometimes in two by two and you're going to run a go route or a stop route or short in or slant. Like, I do like some of that, but that's all their pass game that is or maybe the mesh concept that we saw them score with Devontae Smith. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with their offense, Greeny? There's very little. Part of it is they get no leads. You know, they, they're the slowest starting offense in the NFL. They're, that's not up, up for debate. They get into relatively predictable formations. They get into relatively predictable pass concepts. The main reason why they have success in their pass game is because AJ's a freak. That's really it. So you're talking about coaching, right? I mean, what you're saying, you, the, the conversation we're having is about coaching. If they're not running the offense that they brought in the offensive I do not believe that run, they are running Kellen Moore's offensive Well, system. how does that no. make sense to me? I, I just don't understand why you bring in an offensive coordinator and then don't run his offense. And my question to you, Dan, on that, if a quarterback, you said they're doing more of 2022. If that was the best we've seen of Jalen Hurts, does it make sense to try to tailor the offense to what he did best? It makes sense to tailor any offense, any quarterback, right? Yeah, we, yeah. we know that. The 2022 season is such a standalone situation because they blitzed teams mm -hmm. to start the game. Yeah. They were up 14 0 in games mm -hmm. like that. So then as an offense, I can do whatever I want. I, I get you. You have to. You have to try and stop me. I can do anything I want in any situation. Quarterback run was up. Zone read was up. By the way, they had one of the best offensive lines in the NFL yes. over the last decade that year. So that was a part of that conversation as well. So now, does Jalen look like anything of what we saw in that Super Bowl game? No, he doesn't look like that player anymore. 
both athletically, both run, decision-making wise. He played much faster. The ball placement was better. That has not been who Jalen has been this season. I'll say 2022, I, I remember just watching a lot of their film and when they got behind the stick, second and 20, second and 13, third and 15. Still felt okay. I never worried about this offense and they always found a way to continuously move the chains. That's not the case right now. I don't think Jalen is seeing things correctly as well. Uh, but I do agree, to, agree with you. When it comes to their pass game, it's A.J. Brown is bigger and more physical than anybody else that he's going against. Just A.J., and, go and, win one-on-one. On one. Save yeah. the day for us. Right. That's what I'm So let me come to you on this because Sal set it up earlier and we heard it in the soundbite there. Like, he called it a must win. Yeah. Must wins mean there are ramifications for losing. Mm. We've seen the stuff with Sirianni. You see the question on the screen. Uh, we've seen a coach fired already. Like, what is at stake for Sirianni in this game against the Giants? Well, look, I think everybody knew coming into this season, after last season went the way it did, that his job was on the line this season. Mm -hmm. It's not a secret there. He's going to have to win. Now, again, he's going to be reviewed by his body of work, whether that's Sunday against the Giants, this past Sunday against the Cleveland Browns, what happened after the game. He has a chance to get this straightened out, to get this team back on track, to get this team to win and have the type of season that everybody in Philadelphia expected for the Eagles. If that happens, there's no issues. If it doesn't happen, of course there's going to be questions and issues. So that's on the line for him every single week. That's always at stake for him with this team. There are always going to be questions, and it's going to follow him all season it, long. It would be a bad look to go on the road with the, the player on your team that you took from as the best player, and you brought him to your team go and lose. lose. It feels like there's a lot on the line here that this week. That would look any week. Uh, yeah. It, it, well, they better have a plan. <laughs> Last week's might have been worse, and they came pretty close to yes. losing that.